Hey, you guys got a ring doorbell like this and you're tired of changing batteries, your batteries are always dying? Well, stay tuned to this video. I'm gonna show you guys how you can fix that problem for $20 or less. You don't believe me? Let's go. Guys. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. And if you're a longtime subscriber, welcome back. Now, I got here a ring doorbell and I know a lot of people have this same problem. My ring doorbell has a battery in it and I have to change this battery all the time. And of course, my wife gets pissed because she's like, hey, why didn't you change the battery in your ring doorbell? Well, I'm gonna show you today how you guys can fix this problem and have constant power to this thing and never have to worry about it ever again. All right, let me start by saying this. This video will apply to anybody who has a ring doorbell that has a battery and they don't have any power that's coming to it. Or if you have an existing doorbell and you're replacing your ring doorbell, but there's the doorbell doesn't have any power going to it, this can solve the problem as well. And it also applies if you're installing a ring doorbell for the first time and there is no power. This video will cover all the scenarios that you may face and get you to installing a ring doorbell and not having to worry about changing batteries ever again. As always, I'm gonna leave links in the description so you can find all the tools that I'm using and all the products that I'm gonna use and I'm gonna leave timestamps as well, so if you need to jump back and forth to a certain part of the video that, that applies to you, or if a part doesn't apply to you, you can skip it and go to the part that actually applies to you. So how is this exactly gonna work? Well, let me start by telling you, you're gonna to need to get yourself one of these. What I have here is a 24 volt adapter that's going to be able to supply power that you need to your ring doorbell. And this is the product that is gonna cost less than 20 bucks. I'll leave a link in the description, don't worry about it. But what you wanna do is you wanna order one of these first before you begin, okay? Now, or what you wanna look for is you wanna look for a power outlet that's behind this ring doorbell on the other side of this wall. Now, in my case, of course, I'm not gonna be that lucky. Some of you are, which is great. But in my case, behind this ring doorbell, I have a alarm system here and a light switch here. And my power outlet is all the way on the other side of this wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to take power from that outlet and bring it here to this ring doorbell so that it can have constant power at all times. Some of the tools that I'm going to use in here, if you have them, great. If you don't have them, you're going to need to get them. But then that's going to blow my budget. It's not going to be less than 20 bucks. Here's a little tip. If you don't have some of those tools, you can borrow them from Home Depot but don't tell them I told you that, or from Amazon. You guys get what I'm talking about. All right, so now that we got all those formalities out of the way, you got all your tools together, let me go ahead and show you guys how we can get this thing done. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that behind your ring doorbell on the opposite side, you have free space. Now, like I said, my ring doorbell is located somewhere on the other side of this wall. So what you wanna do is you wanna measure first to know exactly where your ring doorbell is. In my case, it falls just on the right side here of my outlet in this location right here. So I know that I'm clear and free of all obstacles. The last thing you wanna do is be drilling through your wall and you drill into some electrical box or something that's important. Your wife might get mad. So check first, make sure that the area behind is clean and clear and we're gonna go ahead and start the process. I'll show you what you gotta do first. The idea here is that we're gonna drill a hole from the, from the ring doorbell to the inside of the house. And I know by measuring, my hole is gonna fall somewhere here to the right of this outlet and that's good. As long as you have a clear space, that's exactly what we're looking for. Now let's go ahead and start drilling. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and remove your ring doorbell from the wall. There's usually a screw underneath here. Uh, mine is already removed, but it's a safety screw. So if you need to remove that, get the tool and remove the safety screw from the bottom. Once you have the screw removed, you can go ahead and remove the cover from your ring doorbell. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna remove the screws that hold it to the plate that's attached to the wall. There are four screws, one here, 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 and here. Be careful not to lose these screws. They're very important. Don't, you don't wanna lose them. Once you're done, you just remove your ring doorbell and set it aside. So if you notice on the back of your ring doorbell, there are two screws here. That's where we're gonna connect our power to. So we wanna drill a hole on the plate here, somewhere here behind these screws for our new wires. Next, you wanna use a drill bit like this. Mine is for a concrete wall or masonry. If you don't have masonry and you have wood, just use the appropriate drill bit. Make sure it's long enough to go all the way from one side to the next. Once you're ready, go ahead and drill your hole. 
If you're drilling through concrete, make sure you have it on the hammer bit setting. Now that we're inside, we got our hole up here. And what we're gonna do is we need to remove our baseboard along the wall here, all the way out to my outlet. So what you wanna do first is you wanna take a utility knife and you wanna score your baseboard on the top, all the way around. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna remove your baseboard. I have a baseboard puller, a baseboard removal tool here. Um, we're gonna use this to pry off our baseboard. As we remove the pieces, you'll see the staples are still in here. We may be able to reuse them, but if not, we can remove them afterwards and then reattach them once we're done. As you notice here, this piece of baseboard is long. I don't need to remove all of it. I just need enough space to work here. So I'm gonna leave it like this. Just be careful. Remember there's staples here. You don't wanna get yourself cut. Next, we wanna go ahead and remove the faceplate for our outlet. Once you've got your faceplate off, just set it aside. So what you wanna do is you wanna put a hole on somewhere very close to your box, just a small hole, cause we're gonna fish the wire through here and at the bottom right below it. So. Let's go ahead and cut this. You can use a drywall uh, blade or utility knife or something just to make a small hole. Okay, now that we have that hole made, we can just go down anywhere below the baseboard and we're gonna cut another hole. Don't worry about this hole because the baseboard is gonna cover it so it doesn't really matter as long as you have access to behind the drywall. Now we can take our power adapter and what we want to do is we want to fish our wire from this hole all the way down to the hole down here. I like to use this magnetic fish. I'll leave a link in the description. The reason why I like it for this instance is because it's got a very small piece that goes through and it works well for tight spaces. So let's see if we can get this to work. And now we have our fish all the way through. Now let's tape our wire to the part that's going in here. And then we can pull slowly from the bottom and feed our wire through. Now what you wanna do is you wanna pull as much wire as you can through here. And what you want to do is you want to have enough leftover so that just enough so that you can run it behind the faceplate when you put it back on and plug it in to your outlet like that. So let's go ahead and leave this for now temporarily like this. All right. So what we want to do now is we want to route our wire as low as we can. So it's behind the baseboard along the floor. You don't have to worry about this being protected because it is low voltage wiring. It's not high voltage, so we can tuck it here. We don't have to run it behind the wall. Just make sure it's below the baseboard so that the nails don't pierce it when you're putting the nails back in. Once you've routed your wire all the way to where right below where your hole is up here, what we want to do next is repeat the same process. I'm going to open up a hole behind the baseboard here and I'm going to drop my fish from the top hole all the way down and I'm going to pull the wire all the way up to the top hole. This hole doesn't have to be too big. You just want it enough to get your wire through. Likewise for the hole up top, you want to keep it as small as possible because we're going to have to patch this hole when we're done. So we want to keep it as small as possible so that our patch is very minimal. Once you have your hole, you can go ahead and drop your fish down. Once again, we can now tape our wire and pull your wire from up top. 
while you guide your wire all the way through. All right, now we got our wire through our top hole here, and all we gotta do now is get it from here to outside. Now, depending on how stiff or how rigid your wire is, you can try and push it back through the hole and just feed it through. That's what we're gonna attempt to do today. If not, you may have to put a fish, a rigid fish, or sometimes you can put the drill bit back through the original hole, tape this to the tip, and then pull the drill bit back out. But I'm gonna try and use it the, I'm gonna try and use the wire itself and push it through the hole. As you feed it through the hole, you can wait for it to see if it comes out outside. Once we're outside, we can just go ahead and pull the remaining wire all the way through. Once you have your wire, obviously this is too much wire, you're gonna wanna cut the wire back a little bit. So what you wanna do is you wanna cut back a piece of the wire um, I like to leave a little bit extra because I can pull it back from inside. So what you can do is you can cut the wire here a little bit and then you're going to need to split it. And now you can go ahead and strip your wire. And then you can go ahead and twist your wire. And now it's time to reinstall. Remember those screws I talked to you about? We're just going to loosen each screw, wrap the, the wire around each one of the screws and tighten it down. It doesn't matter which wire goes on which screw. Just make sure you wrap it around in a clockwise direction so that when you tighten the screw down, it tightens the wire around it. So you have one wire done, you can go ahead Put the other wire around then go ahead and tighten down the screw and there you have it a nice tight connection so guess what we're almost to the home stretch next thing you want to do is you want to feed your wire back in you may need the help of somebody else to pull any excess wire back but that should be it now all you need to do is line up the screw holes and start installing and reinstalling the screws. All right, now it's time to put on our face plate. Tighten it up and then we can go ahead and plug our adapter in. I know some of you are gonna complain that it has a little it's, the faceplate is raised here. If you wanted to, you could notch the faceplate, but because of where this is located, I don't think this is a bad look. Um, it's not that much wiring coming out and most people won't even notice it. Once you have your power adapter plugged in, you wanna slide your battery in. You're still gonna need your battery, but what it does is it charges your battery for you at all times, so you don't have to worry about your battery being charged. Then put on your cover plate and put back in your final safety security screw. Once you're done with that, the installation is complete. The last thing you have to do is patch that little hole in your drywall and put your baseboards back and re it. Now for the fun part, it's time to put everything back together. So what you're gonna see me doing here now is I'm gonna try and put back all the baseboards once you're done and neaten everything up, re it. I'm gonna fast forward through this. If you notice on some of the baseboards here, you can see the staples. What I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna try and remove all the staples like this, put it back in, and then I'm gonna shoot it with my air compressor and put it back in. If you don't have an air compressor, you can remove these staples and liquid nail it to the wall. Some people do that, or just use caulking and press it to the wall. Um, whatever you wanna do, it's your choice, but at the end of the day, I'm sure you're gonna have somebody bugging you about putting it back together, right? So let's go ahead, remove all these screws and put these baseboards back the way they're supposed to be.
Once you're done, putting everything back together with your staple gun, the last thing left to do is go ahead and caulk it. Now, I'm not a professional caulker, so guys, please don't get on me. I'm gonna try my best, make it nice and neat. And once I'm done with that, we'll wrap this project up. The last thing to do is patch this little hole right here. It's a small hole. You guys know pretty much, if you guys have made it this far, you know how to patch a drywall hole. So I'm not gonna go ahead and show you guys how to do that, but patch it up, use some touch-up paint, paint it all up, and then you'll be done with the inside work. Another project successfully completed, guys. That was awesome. It was pretty easy. I just got a small little drywall patch left to do. It's a small hole. You want to keep it as small as possible. Hey, at the end of the day, no more complaining about having to change those batteries and everything is good to go. She's enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. And it was another project, another easy DIY project for me to show you guys exactly how I do it and my thoughts going into the project and exactly how I solved most of the problems that were there. Now listen, again, remember, the adapter is the only thing you really need to make this a successful project. All the other tools I borrowed or you can borrow from Home Depot or Amazon. And I hope you were able to tackle this project and get this done or have the courage to try and take this project on and get it done. At the end of the day, simple tools, pretty easy, pretty straightforward, and I know that you guys can do it too. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.